I'm Julia Elton, and as several of you know, I've been doing over the last five or six years a lot of in-depth research into the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which it about which untold twaddle has been written mostly by Isambard Brunel Jr. So I've been having a nice time doing this now. I'm just going to, before I share my screen, I'm just going to start. This comes out of Brunel's um, report when he submitted his first batch of designs in 1829 to the competition. And he says, according to the present mode of connecting the links, upwards of one quarter of the whole weight of the chains is employed in the connections, increasing the load without adding to the strength. I propose adopting an improvement lately introduced by Messrs Maudsley and Field in a bridge constructed by them for the island of Ceylon, by which the short connecting links are dispensed with, the total width diminished considerably and the number of joints reduced to half. And this is what he is talking about. Um, but as you can see, and I think nothing I do is going, you will have to use your eyes. You can see that how, how the chains are joined with connecting links. Ignore the top part of the screen, because in fact, that is a modern um, addition. But the original Samuel Brown things, and you can see that in fact, the chains are joined with a sort of connecting piece and you know, bolted together. So that is what Brunel is complaining about. Um, there you can see it very clearly on Old Hammith Bridge, so that you get, you know, two lumps every now and again all the way up the chains. And that's actually although it's a later bridge, is a very graphic description, it seems to me, of exactly what Brunel is trying to overcome. And that is the detail of his connecting, of how he connects his links. Well, then, of course, I sort of got interested because... The great thing about having been an antiquarian book dealer, you've no idea the extraordinary things that I've come up with. And once upon a time, I had a book called the History by Bingham called The History of Public Works in Salon. And it's incredibly rare. There are only two copies in the London Libraries, one in the British Library and one in the Civils. So it was quite fun. And I wondered if this would come up and it did. There is the bridge. Quite, I mean, it's half the size of most of the big ones, and it was shipped out to Ceylon in 1820. The really extraordinary thing is that Maudsley's are not, of course, known for building bridges. I mean, they build machinery and, you know, they built the block making machinery. They are not known for suspension bridge designs, and I think this is the only one that they ever did. The bridge was commissioned by the colonial government of Ceylon and it was shipped out in 1829 to improve the transport network. And Sir Henry Ward, who was the governor of Ceylon, writes, it is strange that the means of accomplishing this improvement should have been in the colony for more than 30 years without any proposal being made for the taking advantage of them. Indeed, I believe that the bridge though nearly complete in all its parts, had been altogether forgotten in the commissariat stores until I caused it to be put together and ascertained that out of the whole mass of iron sent out in 1829, only two links were wanting, which were easily supplied from India. So it was paid for, shipped out to Ceylon, stuffed in a store and completely forgotten about. So there it is then. Then you can see the end view. And I, it's quite hard to see, and I've blown it up and blown it up, except it gets fuzzier and fuzzier. But actually, you know, the links are, are joined flat on like this, as against, you know, with connecting pieces. And 
you can just see that it's a rather pretty and elegant little bridge. I think, alas, it's longer there, as far as I can see. I've been all over every website looking for it, but I think it has gone. It's and also, of course, it's not recorded in Chacula, which is the great suspension bridge um, compilation. So it's completely, it is completely unrecorded, it's a completely unrecorded bridge with this very interesting Brunel connection. And of course, Maudsley's, as you will all know, was very well known to Brunel. He made, as I said, he made the block making machinery for Marcus and Bart Brunel. And he did, of course, build the first of the two Thames tunnel shields. And he also built a 24 horsepower steam engine for the Thames tunnel, as well as the first Thames tunnel shield. And in 1829, he was working on the bridge. Brunel knew him very well and must have actually seen it when he was working on the Clifton design. Because if he hadn't seen it, how would he have known? Because the bridge is completely unknown to everybody. Well, of course, Isambard Jr., um, telling his normal pack of lies, says that it says that Isambard Kingdom Brunel invented this kind of link um, and that this link became standard across suspension bridges across suspension bridges but of course that's not true because Brunel's chains weren't they were they were manufactured but they weren't of course ever hung and finally they were shipped to Saltash. So I think the first time that these connecting links were seen in public was, of course, the Hungerford footbridge. And what's quite interesting is that actually, and again, I must find out from Andrew how to do this, the hangers are in fact hung from the mid-span of the flat chains and they are not hung from where the two chains meet. And it's a very sort of curious and rather clumsy design. And of course, it puts um, bending stresses into the, into the chains. They're hung, it's very hard to explain. It's, each hanger is hung from alternate chains. So that in fact, although it's only a footbridge and it doesn't enormously matter, the fact is, it was putting bending into, into, the, into the chains. And it's curious that Brunel is normally such a good designer. It's just rather clumsy, it seems to me, anyway. Um, when Barlow and Hawkshaw bought the chains and erected them at Clifton, and you can see very clearly, because the wonderful thing about Brunel's design are those beautiful faceted lugs. But Barlow and Hawkshaw thought that it was very unsatisfactory, especially on a road bridge, which had to carry much heavier loads clearly than a pedestrian bridge, felt that it's actually not at all a good idea to hang your hangers halfway between each um, link. And so that they, in fact, this is yet another of their modifications on the bridge, they, in fact, hung the hangers um, from the main connecting so the first, I mean, the, the first bridge after Hungerford to use these overlapping joints was, I think, William Tierney Clark's bridge in Budapest, which is opened 1849, so it's a bit later than Maidenhead. And note that date of 1849, because the bridge I showed you much earlier on the Portland Bridge, of course, is 1853. And so it's not using, um, it's, you know, it's still using the old fashioned way of doing it. It is not being influenced by the dazzling Brunel and his wonderful links. Then you get the next one after. That is, what am I doing is? That's Thomas Page's bridge. And again, you can see the, the overlapping joints. And you can also see, of course, that his bridge deck is rather like Barlow and Hawkshaw's bridge deck, and nice and stiff and heavy. So that's the next one that I was able to discover. And then, of course, 
you get salt ash, which is where the Clifton Suspension Bridge chains finally got sold to in 1853, but of course weren't put up till 50, or the bridge wasn't finished till 59. And although the bridge um, is in fact hung from the vertical post that you can see, which is and supported equally by the chains in the tube, you honestly don't really read this as a suspension bridge. It's actually a lenticular truss bridge. And you know, it was it was a good way of using secondhand material in a sense. Then we get so there we get Clifton. You know, as it as it's under as it finally is under construction in the 1860s, and of course the interesting thing is that Clifton is almost the last big wrought iron chain bridge built in Britain. 18, the Lambeth Suspension Bridge in 1862 is, of course, cables, and most bridges after that were built with cables. Until you get the new Hammersmith Bridge, which, of course, is incredibly old-fashioned. By this time, nobody is building chain links like this, but he nevertheless is using the Brunel feature of overlapping links. And so, in a sense, for Clifton, and it's a little, you know, it's a little family of links, if you like. I mean, that is where it all began. And as you can see, erected by Captain John Graham, ironwork obtained from England in 1829, and it was completed in about 1859. Anyway, that is where Brunel got the whole idea of the overlapping links for the Clifton Suspension Bridge from, and no. They weren't all that influential because the bridge wasn't built until 1864. As I say, the first time they were used was Hungerford. So there is a small handful of bridges using them that I've been able to find. And by 1864, wrought iron chain bridges, which required those overlapping links, is on the, they're on the way out. So there you go. Very, un, very unusual bit of Maudsley structure. Very unknown. I mean, they don't build suspension bridges Maudsley, so I can't find anything about it in the Maudsley papers. So it's a kind of weird one-off that Brunel happened to wander into the workshops one day and think, oh, that's a good idea. At least that is my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you.